Hello everyone, this is the great Lord and Master Asaral, the Eternal. For what's going to be a continuation of the video I made last, about five months ago, uh, this is going to show how the cube interacts with the single digit code, and, and it's, going to real, it's going to expand upon the idea that they are the same. Like the reason why the single digits of 0 through 9 are what they are is because it's a reflection of the cube matrix that we live in. Okay? And the core cube structure is right here of 0 through 9. The, 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 uh, nine in, the 0 and 9 points are in the center of the cube, and the 1 through 8 take the corners of the cube. And this Yggdrasil structure is just a continuation of that. It starts with 10, it goes to 19, and then it would, it would, it would continue to infinity, 20 to 29, 30 to 39, 40 to 49, and, and the, but the core is always the same. It never changes. Okay? And, uh, and there's other aspects to the cube too. I've been dealing with the corners, but this interesting structure now is showing all, all three aspects. You have the corners with the circles, but now you have in the triangle shapes the faces, and that's laid out um, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and 6, following the same pattern that all these structures follow out with the uh, female aspect first, then the masculine. And, uh, and then the uh, connecting lines are shown by these small letters on the lines, sm small numbers on the lines here. You got 1, 2, 3, 4, and you jump to the middle, 5, 6, 7, 8, and then the bottom plane of 9, 10, 11, and 12. And, those, and all of these counterbalance themselves. Okay. And, uh, like for instance, like the faces, like you have the 1, 6 becomes 7, 2 and 5 becomes 7, and 3 and 4 becomes 7. And of the uh, lines, you got 12 and 1 become 13, then 4. Uh, 11 and 2 become 13, then 4. All the oppositions become 13 and 4. Okay? And this is what is going on. And, and this shows up someplace else. This actually shows up in the code from the Osiron Tarot Spiral. If you recall, the Osiron Tarot Spiral produces a code, but that code really doesn't have anything to do with the tarot per se, it's just a product or a phenomenon of the numbers themselves. And that code is this, you see it here, you got the numbers going 1 through 9, and the code after reduction is right next to it. You got 136, 163, and then 199. And that is the code, and how that works is, um, you have the 1 and 3, and the 6 is cancelled out by the 3, and then you have the 1 and the 6, and the 3 is cancelled out by the 6, and that turns it off. And then what you're left with is 1, 3 becomes 4, 1 and 6 becomes 7, and then when you add 4 and 7, that, that becomes 11, 2 ones, and then 2. Okay. And then the 2 um, combines with the 3 to become 5, which is the center of the true tree, and the 2 plus 6 is 8, which is um, the uh, Yassad point on the true tree. Uh, and that's significant. This is showing how the uh, true tree of life works. Um, and that's that. And this, is, and this, of course, shows you the cube. You got 1 and 3 for the 13 element, which becomes 4. And then the 1 and 6 is the oppositions for the 7. So this is showing the cube. This, is, this code is, showing, is telling you that the uh, single digit is a cube. Now, but there is another aspect to it, because to cancel out these numbers, I needed to kind of play around a little bit, but I'm only using the numbers, like the, uh, just a natural evolution of numbers to do that. If I was to use those other numbers w within the code itself, it changes things a little bit. It just shows the same thing, but from a, from a different perspective. Okay, so now, you're adding 1 and 1, that becomes 2. You're adding 2 and 3, that becomes 5. Um, 4 and 1 becomes 5, 5 and 6 becomes 11 and 2, and 7 plus 1 is 8, 8 and 9 uh, becomes 8 when, when reduced. And then when you add the 2 and the 5, that becomes 7, the 5 and the 2 becomes 7, and the 8 and 8 becomes 16, and then 7. Okay, so that leaves you 7, 7, 7. And you know, anyone in the occult world is going to know what that is. Uh, uh, Crowley has a book called 7, 7, 7. Any type of um, triple number in the occult world is going to mean something, whether it, whether it's uh, valid or not, you know. But it's going to, so 777 is that. But now when you add 777, that becomes 21. And the cube itself is uh, made of 22 segments. You got the uh, nine corners, six faces, 
uh, I'm sorry, the corners don't count on that. You got the you got the six faces, the twelve lines, and the three aspects of uh, height, width, and depth. And the only thing missing in this case would be the center point in the middle. But but when you leave out that uh, center point in the middle, that is twenty one, and that reduces to a three. So all of this is you know this is coming back to three uh, quite a bit, and you'll see more of this in a minute. But now remember. This is only a 2D representation of a 3D cube, okay? And um, because of that, in the 2D form, you can, like, in these face triangle things, you can't tell what um, plane of the cube this triangle belongs to because it could either be the upper one or the side one. So it takes two triangles to isolate the exact plane that you're dealing with. So in for instance, you got the one here, you can't tell if it's up or down, but uh, when you add one more to it, you can. So for instance, this one and two tells you that this is the top uh, the, the top plane, and the one and three is the uh, lower rear plane. So now it takes two to isolate it, and this is important, this theme of duality, everything is duality. There is no such thing as singularity that any conscious mind can be aware of. Okay, so, so now we're seeing that here. Two triangles become a diamond, okay, in all of these. And the up, the, uh, up here with the red, that's the face you can see, and the blue one is the aspect you can't see, because any cube, any three-dimensional object, but a cube especially, you can only see three of the faces at, at, at any given time. You can't see the other two. So this is sort of um, showing a black sun mythology in a way. Because what you're seeing is the face of the cube, this is what we see, but behind that is three more planes that you can't see, but there's now there's a, another hidden aspect that I'll show you right now. See, all of these cubes, when you combine two of these triangles, it forms this, one diamond, and, and the numbers that are in these slots are these numbers here. So for instance, you got the one and two becomes three, the uh, three and five becomes eight, the six and the four become ten, then one, and then it shifts for the ones and back. Um, three and one become four. Five and six become eleven and two. And then two and four become six for here. And this is what that's showing here. So now, in this configuration, though, there's numbers that aren't being used. It goes through every one except for the five and the seven aren't used in, in that joined combined configuration. And um, now you're going to notice something really amazing about this. Uh, the one, three, and eight combine to form twelve. The two, four, and six combine the four and twelve, and the five and the seven, the hidden, the numbers not being used, also combine the four and twelve. So it's actually showing a trinary aspect that those guys talk about in vortex math. And so what you're seeing is the face you can see becomes twelve. This is what we see. The rear of that you can't see, but it's there. It's physical. It's there. And then the other twelve is represented by the five and the seven that aren't there. So it's showing you that there's a mysterious aspect that is outside of all of this. It's sort of what's happening by that. And then 12 times 3 becomes 36. So we're seeing that again. But now each of these, each of these planes has an opposition too. So the 3 and the 2 is an opposition and that becomes 5. The 8 and the 6 are an opposition and that becomes 5. And then the 4 and the 1 are oppositions and that becomes 5. And 5, 5, and 5 becomes 15, two female numbers again, and then, then that becomes 6. And it's also showing a 4, 5 configuration because now it's taking four numbers to do that because this 3 and 2 is really the 1, 2, 5, and 6. So that's four numbers that take that, that are joined to make that 5. So we're seeing an aspect to the pentagram too. You have the four elements and then that mysterious etheric aspect of spirit is showing up the five. So all of this is like interrelated and integrated. Pretty amazing. Now we're going to get to something about zero and nine and how that is actually um, the same um, aspect as counter space. Um, last night I actually watched a video that's amazing uh, by Ken Wheeler. Excellent channel from that guy. I watch all his videos. All his videos about uh, that because he has two topics. You know, camera he has a camera topic, then he has a, a topic where he talks about uh, like this stuff. Not this, but the, the aspect of gravity. Uh, um, um, that's what you'll see. But anyway, what do you, okay, now, so the zero, you know, here's a cube. The cube is made up of the eight digits, 
And then the center point of this cube is the 0 and 9 space, okay? And uh, that space I'm postulating is the same exact thing as counter space. Now you're probably saying, what the fuck is counter space? Uh, counter space is this aspect, it, like if you, if you take a magnet, okay, and, and this came from that, uh, that, that, that video last night I watched, it was really good. But if you take a magnet, you have a north pole and a south pole, and in the center of that is the plane of inertia, with, where, and that's the center of the magnet. But that's not a part of the physical properties of the magnet. That is just a uh, aspect of the, of the field's perturbations taking place with the uh, aspect of uh, what we call magnetism. Okay, because if you break that magnet in half, you will have two magnets, and it won't, it, and you won't have one north aspect or one south aspect. It'll, it'll shift to become two magnets. Just like if you take two magnets and join them together, the north and south pole, when they get together, that will become one magnet again. So the plane of inertia in the middle is is counter space. It's, it's the same thing as counter space. So, and 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 uh, what that means is, you can see this in a cube. Like right now, the center point of the cube is the zero nine space in the perfect center of this cube. It, it it didn't start out there. Okay. So what happens is you take the one. Now the one, the center of mass and the center of gravity are in the same point in the center of the object. But now when you add two objects together, it changes. So now the center of the center position between the one and the two is in between the one and the two. And they'll move together to, to, to reconcile that. But they're not moving towards each other. They're both moving towards counter space, according to Ken. Okay. So now when you add the three to this, it shifts the whole dynamic. Now the center point moves somewhere between the, the middle of all these. When you add the four, it moves again to the center of this. When you add the 5, it moves to the center of that. Same thing when you add the 6, it moves again to the center of all of them. When you add the 7, same thing, it moves again. And then when you add the 8, the final 8, it equalizes to form its exact center point. Okay, so the center point isn't really there. It's just, it's a result of the workings of all these other aspects together. And that's that. And that's the zero, 9, the zero and 9 point. So, um... So that's how that goes, and that's why that's like that. So my idea is that the zero nine is counter space. It's not real. That's why the zero and the nine have the properties that they have, because it's representing that counter space aspect. And that's pretty important, and in and, uh, and all of this. Um, and one more thing I want to get to real quick. You see the zero one and the zero two. This is important. Uh, zero and one. Zero and one. And one and two are actually the same exact thing. The only difference is zero and one is not conscious, and the one and two is conscious. Because I have a saying that I made up that I really like, and that's uh, there is no such thing as one. There's only zero and two because consciousness by default is a duality state, is a binary state. So when you have these people telling you to go to oneness, uh, get rid of your e get rid of your ego and all that stuff, that's fucking bullshit. Because um, the core of all of that is consciousness, and that is a binary phenomenon. So there's no getting around that. So there is no such thing as that. So what they say when they go to one, the only thing they could mean is they go to zero, but zero is oblivion and it's not conscious. So you basically, it's an absence of consciousness in that state of zero. So that's what that is. So the zero and one, the one and two is zero and one, just with consciousness. Um, and the zero and one is unknowable to that point because that's the way it goes. So when it, zero becomes one, and what was one becomes alive with consciousness, and that becomes a two. And that's how that works, like that. Um, yeah, that should be it. There's oh, yeah, one more thing too, real quick, real quickly. His, this section was left over from the other video, but uh, even this has a three six nine aspect too. So you got the singular cube here, and then this next fractal of evolution is 8 for the 1 and 8. But 6 times 1 for the faces is 6, and then for the faces, 8 times 6 is 48, which is another 1-2 ratio. And, uh, and that becomes 3. Uh, so you're seeing this repeatable 639, 639 aspect to go along with the 189 aspect. Just watch other videos, you'll see what that means. And getting back to those ratios again for a minute, I forgot to add this. All of these things are showing a 1-2 ratio. You got the 1-2 here, 
and one two here and one two here. But now what you're seeing with all these numbers, you got one three eight two four six. Two of only two of these numbers are feminine, and four of them are masculine. And the two numbers that aren't seen are feminine as well. But that's leaving you another one two ratio. So we're seeing that all over the place. Even the cube itself is a, a one two ratio with uh, its six faces and then twelve connecting lines. So six twelve. 630. <laughs> so we've seen this all over the place. It's really, really powerful, really important. And, uh, and what this sh is showing is it's just showing that this is a uh, cube matrix based on duality, basically. This is a cube matrix. So it's not just a cube matrix. I mean, the cube matrix isn't some evil. There's people who say that this is the evil slave matrix and it's bad and it's all that's fucking horseshit. All it is, all the cube is, is a perfect representation of three dimensions, height, width, and depth, in perfect balance and perfect harmony. That's all it is. And this is what this is showing. That's why the single digit code is perfect, because the cube is perfect. That's why, because that's what it represents. So, that should be it. Uh, thank you, and namaste.